In umbrella sampling, one takes a structure, including a ligand and, for example, a protein, and one attempts to move the ligand away from the protein in small increments. This is performed by adding uh, springs with specific force constants and changing the equilibrium distances of the springs as the simulation proceeds. After taking the statistics of how those distances change along the simulation, it is possible to perform weight histogram analysis, WAM, and obtain a potential of mean force. Yasara does not contain a built-in umbrella sampling macro. I have built such a macro and I have made it available in ResearchGate. That macro is available at this address here in this reply. You just unload it and unzip it in your working directory. When you unzip it, you get a readme file, which is mostly a history of changes uh, made since the beginning of the time when I produced the macro, and then the two files that we are interested in. One procedure 11 Feb 2020 MCR is the bulk of the work, which you should not move, and you have wamvariables.mcr, which you should change according to your system. There are a few things here that you must change. You start here with macro target. As usual in Yasara macros, you have to select here the address of your scene, already including water. So, for example, if the scene is already in your working directory and if it is called, let's say, complex, Dot .sce, you just write it here as complex. Then you must change your ligand and receptor atoms. The ligand is the number of the atom in your ligand that you want to pull away from a specific region from the protein. In this specific example, I want to move this flavin FMN residue away from the protein. So I will try to move away this atom. This atom we see here it's 9376. So this is the number we write at the ligand region. So here you do it 9376. You must select the atom from the receptor that you want to take this one away from. So usually we take an atom which is present in the binding pocket as far away from the entrance as possible. Now we'll select, for example, this atom here. So this is atom 7233. And you write it here in the set, 7233. So these two atoms define a straight line, which is, of course, the line connecting them. Now, we want, it, we want the ligand to move away from the protein, and in order to prevent it from getting stuck in cavities which might be present at the sides, we will define two atoms which I have called anchor atoms. Those are atoms at the opening of the cavity. So I will select it here, it's 8413 and let's say 780. 7880. So let's do it. The anchor 7880. And what was the name I called it? I called it here. It was 
this one, 84.13. Ideally, the two atoms that we select as anchors should define a line which lies more or less in the direction of the line defined by the receptor and the ligand atom. When the script is working, it will try to move this atom so that while it is inside this region, it will try to move more or less into the midline connecting the atom and the midpoint from this. So it will move that way. After the ligand, uh, that ligand atom has moved away from this, then it will again keep more or less at equal distances from those atoms. To select how strongly it tries to keep close to this midline, we have this tethering force constant, which we, which we can move to as high or as low as we want. If we select it here for a very, to a very large number, then it will it will move exactly equidistant from those two atoms. If we select a very small number, then it will be hardly constrained. What else can we do? Well, we must define how much the spring which connects the ligand and the receptor atom, how long it is. And by default, it begins with the average distance between this atom and that one. And then we will select how much does it increase in each window. So do we want to move it by half an angstrom or one angstrom or two angstrom at piece? Well, usually more than one angstrom is not wise. We define it here as in distance change. The larger the number of the distance change we select, then the loser we have to select the force constant of the spring. Usually, I take this spring, this force constant between 5 and 10 uh, kilocals per uh, square angstrom, and I take this distance change about 0.5 at a time. Pull start is a variable which tells us how long will the computer take the uh, average distances between those two atoms, the ligand and receptor, before setting the spring on. So it's just used to select the initial size of the spring. Equilibration time here is how long after the spring is put in place, how long the program will wait until starting to collect statistics. This is important because when we pull the spring, uh, when we get the spring on, its distance changes, its force changes, some, and so we must let some time pass for the system to settle. Sampling time tells us how long the program will be collecting statistics in this window until the moment it will change the, uh, the spring constant again. How many windows will we do? Well, when we started, current window is of course one, and we can use as many windows as we want. And we define it by uh, knowing how long will the distance be when the unbinding event has finished, and we divide it by the distance change. So we can get it here, for example, to 40 windows. Direction, this is just a dummy variable, which is used uh, to change the name of the output files, because sometimes we want to 
to use the same system, the same scene, the same macro target, and we want to use umbrella sampling in different directions so that the files will not get mixed up between different runs. We could obviously just run them in different directories, or we can here change this variable direction and call it, let's say, first run or second run or whatever. We can freeze atoms. If you want some atoms to remain frozen, this happens often. We want, for example, to keep the receptor atom frozen and the anchor atoms frozen. We select it here by in fixed atoms by writing here the names or numbers of the atoms that we want to keep in place. We may also want to direct the program to perform a reverse scan after the ligand has been pulled away from the enzyme. If we want to run the reverse scan, we must set this variable here to 1. If we do not want it to scan, we must set it to 0. Regardless, I mean, whether we have set reverse scan to 0 or to 1, we have to select here numbers of atoms in the receptor and in the ligand. If we are doing reverse scan equals 0, that means if we do not want to reverse the scan, we can just select here anything we want. We can just freeze it all at 1. However, if you want to perform the reverse scan, those second receptor, second ligand, third receptor, and third ligand atoms are the ones that will help guide your ligand back into the pocket in more or less the same confirmation that it left the pocket with. So, for example, we could select for the second pair of receptor ligand, we could select, let's say, this as second ligand and this atom which is close by as the second atom of the receptor. And for the third atom of the ligand, we could select this one. And for the third atom of the receptor, we would choose, for example, this one, something that is close to it at the beginning. Uh, for reasons which I have not yet completely ascertained, the reverse scan often does not work in this script. Therefore, I would advise you not to try to do it here unless you have a very open pocket and a very simple ligand. Otherwise, it is very hard to get the ligand to get back into the pocket. What else can we look? Well, sometimes we want to restart the simulation. For example, we have decided for some reason that we wanted to do 20 windows, but then we realized that 20 windows are not enough and we want to continue. If we want to continue the scan, then we should here change the current window. We change, for example, we have done 20 windows and then we want to continue. So we will start, we'll do it the 21st window. We change again the, where is it, where is it, the number of windows, we change it to a larger number, and then here, at equally over, we set it to 1. We only set equally over equal to 1 when we are restarting or continuing a simulation. And when we do it, we should also here add several lines with parameters. Those are lines which include uh, the reorientation distances and the like. And you do not write them from scratch. Every time the program is running, every time it finishes a window, it outputs a file called 
macro target direction restarts info. At the end of that file, you will get a snippet of two or three lines, which must be pasted here with equally over equal one when we want to restart. If you do it, you always have to remember to change the current window to the number which you are interested in. The rest of the variables here are quite self-explanatory. You will often not want to change them. Uh, well, actually, there is one place that you might want to change. If you want to, to run a second uh, independent simulation from the same starting conditions, you can here change the temperature to an infinitesimally different number. For example, set it to 298 This will give you an independent simulation because the way Yasara works, uh, the initial seed for the random number generator, which uh, assigns initial velocities and uh, to each atom, that random seed is produced from the number in the chosen as temperature. So if you select an infinitesimally different number for the temperature, you will get a whole different uh, random number seed, and so we'll have a different independent simulation. The rest, you do not have to change it. You can change it here if you are using a different force field. You can change cutoffs. Boundaries are always periodic. You do not change it. And that's all. At the end, as the simulation progresses, the program will be outputting the histograms at each window and all the information you need to feed to the WAM program which can be easily downloaded from Grossfield's lab. If you still have any doubts, please go to ResearchGate and drop me a line.